Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome everyone. I am the Seamster. What are we doing today? What am I doing today? Today I'm going to be going over STFU food truck and food trailer applications. That's right. For people that are going to be building their own trailer for or their truck, then you have to fill out some type of application. You have to submit that to your Department of Health or Department of Sanitation or, or Department of Food or Agriculture. Either one of those. There are some states that are very, very... Uh, uh, lenient on uh you know food trucks and food vendors uh you know what and that's great you know maybe there's some states that are out there that allow you just use a wheelbarrow you know just because it's got a wheel on it you can serve hot dogs and anything else out of there if you want to um I, i'm not gonna name any of those states but i can just tell you you know just, uh, yeah like one of those maybe there are some states that are very very tough Okay, so why am I even doing this? Why? Wait a minute, I'm the seamster, right? Yeah, I am. I'm supposed to be sewing right now. I know. Um, well, it's about my son. I'm taking a break from my son. I'm not going to do any sewing unless there's something I need to do on the truck. My son wants to start his own business, so I said, let's do this. Uh, anybody that's got some initiative out there, then I'm willing to help that person to succeed and make it to the top, okay? And I'm going to do that for him. So I'm going to take a break from sewing, and I'm going to be making a video with him on building uh, an STFU uh, food truck. Okay, I've had a food trailer before, and he's worked on that trailer, and, and uh, he's done very well. And he understands that a food trailer, uh, like the one I had, can make a lot of money. That's right. You can make a lot of money in food. You believe that? Yeah. Why? Because people have to eat. Yeah. And most of these people that are at these fairs or these events, uh, guess what they got? They got cash. They got money. Or people are going to events, and they're planning on eating. And that's why they're bringing cash. I know. I do. I do it too. So do you. All right. Okay. So, anyways, let's get beyond that. If you want to see, get the full explanation on why I'm doing this, my son, watch part one of the STF, STFU. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like too if you like what you're hearing, like what you're seeing so far. Okay. So let's do this. Let's start out. Uh, so you want to start up. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to get go on eBay, uh, order yourself a safe serve food book. Yeah. And. Uh, that book is probably going to cost you around $65 to $75. And inside that book, you want to make sure that you get the exam with it. There's an exam. Yeah, you have to go and take the exam. Once you study that book from the beginning to the very end, and you know everything there is when it comes to wear washing, uh, when it comes to sanitation, uh, of cleaning the, even all of your appliances, uh, what temperature foods have to be. Yeah, 135. And uh, you, you just don't, you know the whole book. Then you set up an appointment at a community college or wherever they, they do cooking classes and this person will have a computer there and they'll set you up and you'll take the test. You have to have, like I say, a 70 or 75% or better in order to get your uh, safe serve certificate. Yeah, one of these things right here. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you can probably take your allergen certificate and get it there or you can go online and do it yourself for like $10. And that's their certificate. You're going to have to get both of those. Um, the reason why I say you need to do that right now because before you even submit your application you, for building a food truck, uh, you have to have those to submit with it. Okay? So, once you go online to your Department of Health and Department of Safety or Sanitation, uh, inside of there, uh, on the internet, wherever the website is, you're going to have some type of plan review manual. There should be, okay, for your state. There should be a plan review manual and it's going to explain in here everything that you need to know about having a food truck or food trailer okay so this is going to help you actually fill out your application okay so that's first uh, the next thing you're gonna have to do once you study that and you understand it print it off like I did is you're going to have to have your uh, standard operating procedures SOPs Okay, and this is the application. This is the actual application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of these right here uh, so that you get a good understanding. On page one, it's just going to be your typical uh, information, the name of your uh, your food truck or food trailer I got on there, zippity doo -dah. Okay, and then where you're from and the phone number that they can contact you. Also, on that first page, you're going to have your menu. Okay, all the way down, I start out, and they want to know everything. Everything that you're going to be serving. So if you have a uh, Coke machine, they want that. If you're going to be serving onions on top of your hot dogs, relish, jalapenos, uh, uh, barbecue beef, ketchup, mustard, you name it. Uh, even right down to salt and pepper. Okay, They're going to want to know that you are serving any of that stuff. They want that list 
on here, okay? Uh, depending on the state you're from, remember, this is Michigan. And I'm going to tell you right now, Michigan is very strict. And But I like it. I don't like it because it makes it difficult for people to try to fill these applications out. But I like it because for the consumer, it keeps people safe. And that's page one. Uh, page two, it's going to have uh, how... What what kind what kind of uh, appliances are go are you going to use to um, to store your 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 food? Is it going to be in a dry bin? Uh, is it going to be in a freezer? Is it going to be in a refrigerator? Uh, where is the meat going to be before you even uh, prepare it? Okay, how is it even going to get transported? Okay, that's on the next page. So moving along, um, cross contamination. Okay, that's big. Uh, you, there's going to be a sheet on there on cross-contamination to know that you understand that you cannot mix things that have eggs that goes uh, on the same counter and then that goes with the fresh fruits or vegetables that you just sliced up because there are people that have, you know, that have high allergies to, to eggs. Yeah, they can die from that. And so they want to make sure that you are actually cleaning, sanitizing that before you uh, cut anything else on that countertop. Again... That's all great, right? Because we're looking out for the consumer. Uh, the next page is going to be, uh, if you have hot dogs, uh, how are you going to cook that? It's gonna be on a hot dog roller or you're gonna cook it on a grill. Either way, all that stuff has to be listed in here. If you have onions, tomatoes, lettuce, and all that stuff, they wanna know, is it going to be pre-cut? Are you going to cut it? If you cut it, where is it gonna go after you cut it? It's gonna go in the refrigerator. And then right after that, you're gonna take it out as needed and you're gonna put it back in the refrigerator. Uh, there's going, to be a, there's going to be all types of initials on these sheets. You've got to initial everywhere. They want to make sure that you are actually reading the material that you're signing for. Okay? And they may even, you know, there may even be places on there that you, when you initial, you have to actually put something else on there when it comes to how you're going to protect people from hair. Uh, I'm going to have a hair net. I'm going to have a, a ball cap. I'm going to have a beer guard. These type of things have to be identified on this plan. I know it sounds difficult already and it can be stressful but that's why I'm doing this so that you get a good understanding of what's to come if you have uh, any type of you're gonna have to have wear washing wear washing if you don't know what that is you're gonna have to have that three sink okay where it has a, a wash for where your soap is at and then the next one's a rinse and the other one's a sanitizer do you even know how much sanitizer or chlorine that you're going to use when you dip that in there and then you're gonna let it air dry do you even know well, you might want to, 50 ppm, okay? Uh, they want to know what items are you going to clean in that sink. Yeah, what's the biggest item you're going to clean in there? Because you can't have a little uh, 12 by 6 by 6 sink and then plan on cleaning some type of pot or pan that's, you know, 12 by 16 by 18. You can't do it, okay? They're going to want you to have a sink to clean your biggest item. That's right. I mean, I don't mean like uh, your hot dog roller, for example, because that you're going to do CIP, which is clean in place. And you're going to have spray bottles that are identified with either, you know, with a, a soap, a rinse, and a sanitizer, and maybe even a bucket. But they're going to want to know all of that. That's got to be listed on here, okay? And that is what this sheet is for. All the appliances are listed on this from the very top all the way to the bottom. And it's identifying, you know, slushy machine, uh, the eight head Coke machine, uh, nacho chip warmer, you name it, uh, the small microwave, popcorn machine, the cheese warmer, uh, even the countertops, uh, uh, the deep fry. All these things have to be identified of how you are going to clean all of your appliances on your truck. Okay, listen, this isn't just simple. I'm just going to go and build a food truck. Well, I'm just going to go buy a food truck or a food trailer. It isn't that easy, okay? You have to actually know something. You have to actually identify to these people that work for the Department of Health how you're going to take care of this stuff so that we, the consumers, you, don't get sick, okay? They even want you to identify uh, the type of hose you're going to use to have water running to your truck or trailer. They're going to want to know that. Is it a food grade hose? Is it just a regular garden hose? It better not be. And also, uh, how big is the tank you're going to be using? That fresh water tank, 33 gallon, 25 gallon. It's got to be so so much of a size, okay? Because you got to have at least five gallons of water to run to just to do your uh, cleaning. Um, the next thing is going to be, they're going to want to know how are you going to uh, identify 
your appliances uh, as far as your hot water heater make sure you tell them is it going to be on demand is it going to be an electric 2.5 gallon which is what I typically would use a 2.5 gallon is plenty enough hot water and it's electric so it makes it really easy um, they want to know the size of the refrigerator or the freezer the cubic foot uh, if you're going to be using electricity they want to know what type of electricity are you using uh, yeah I know a generator how big is a generator uh, are you going to be used just a standard plug-in what well how big is the plug-in is it going to be 50 or 30 amp these are things that they have to identify if you're using a deep fryer uh, you have to identify under the type of deep fryer and is it a type 1 hood and then you get to the last page you're going to actually sign it it says right there the seamster and then they have where they will sign down here for approval and then if they want to put additional comments they will do that on the last page okay hopefully you don't have any additional comments hopefully it just stays blank like that one right there it says none uh, and they just pass it and you're good to go uh, now the next thing you're gonna have to have is you're going to have to identify all of the appliances that you have on your STFU okay so that was a picture of a microwave uh, this is another one of the popcorn machine that says the model number it says how big it is it says the wattage the deep fryer they want to know what that is and even right down to my hot water tank yeah that eco 2.5 em uh, that right there that's got to be on there okay but last but not least probably the most important thing other than the application of course is you're going to have to identify your layout of your STFU this one right here I'm gonna just show you mine is going to be exactly like this I'm not going to deviate one bit that's just a page one of it I'm gonna have three pages here because each one shows something different and then the next one this is going to be of all of the appliances that I have on the STFU okay and as you can see my seats are up here right here where my fingers are moving and then everything moves backwards okay so here's the freezer, here's the refrigerator, here's the microwave, and then everything just goes that way. Then the last page uh, is identifying even more. Where's my hot water tank? Where are my lines at? Where is my fresh water tank? Where's my gray water tank? Where is, where is everything that is not identified on another uh, piece of paper that you just seen? Okay, so if you need to pause that, pause that. All right, so once this information is all filled out, your application what you're going to do is you're going to fill out a check and ours for the state of Michigan is four hundred dollars that's right four hundred dollars to do what I just did so it's gonna go on somebody's desk and they're gonna review it and they're gonna do what I just did what we just did and they're gonna go through each page and then they're gonna uh, go at the very end they're gonna sign it and then they're gonna look at the check and go yeah great and then they're gonna deposit it okay so once that's done they'll send you a, uh, a, a an approved application and then you can start building your STFU alright so once you start building the STFU uh, then you're done and you're finished and then you will notify them that you need to have an inspector come that's right a food inspector food safety inspector come and look at your truck and they're gonna go by these plans remember you sent these plans in these right here and he's going to go by that and make sure everything is as you said and then he's going to test your knowledge he or she is going to test your knowledge to see if you really know what you are doing okay well let's just say for instance that uh, okay that's all done let's be done talking about that right there now let's just say that you go and purchase a trailer or you go purchase a truck and it hasn't never been in service you are going to have to do this okay regardless depending on what state you're in again remember the wheelbarrow thing depending on what state you are in you are going to have to do these exact same plans if you purchase a truck or trailer that has not been in service or has been out of service for more than a year that's right if you purchase a food truck or food trailer make sure that 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 STFU was certified last year and it's still within one year because if that's so you don't have to do all this all you have to submit is just some standard operating procedures of how you are going to use to run the truck and typically if that truck is still in service within a year then you can just use theirs and put your name on it yeah that's it it's easier that way but most of the time <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now it isn't gonna work that way most of the time these trucks and these trailers have not been certified uh, for, for more than a year or not even certified at all and these people are just selling their trailers and their trucks to you and you do not even know that you have to do this yeah 
you're gonna have to do this and their truck or trailer might not even been built properly okay their sinks may not even be arranged they might even have not even enough sinks uh for you to even to, to begin you might have to start even doing some work on that truck or trailer so be mindful understand that remember if it's been more than a year you're gonna have to do this, this whole application okay again that's right all right everybody i hope this video actually helped uh stay tuned for the actual building of the truck with my son and uh i hope everything turns out okay i, I think it will but uh with that remember the only excuse you can make is the one that you actually say Peace out, everybody. <laughs>